Okay, good news. I have it working. I am going to use AI to create a smart home budgeting app. Home Assistant doesn't have anything that connects with this. This has to be broken down into like three big pieces. Grab the information from the bank, pass it to a llama, post it in a place that makes sense. Brute force my way around, just figure out what's going on. Granted, I did read their code. It looked fine, but I'm still not gonna trust it. It was not easy, it was that simple. But now that I am trying to connect Plaid to it, the local AI seems to have problems seeing it. If I can't get this working, then this project stops here. There are two major things that I wanted to prove with this challenge. The first is that you can use AI in your automations in a meaningful way. Even though the premise is in its infancy, I truly believe that this is more than just a gimmick. It just needs time for it to just become more accessible and more uh, reliable. The second thing is that I wanted to prove that you don't have to be scared to use AI. Guys, come on, look, look. I personally like to use GPT within my automations because I get the best results with it. But if that's not your thing, I wanna prove that you could also use Olama within your local automations. You could do this with Olama. Now, for those of you new to like the whole local LLM space or Alama in general, Alama is basically a open source machine learning platform that can run LLMs. And unlike its other counterparts like GPT, it's completely 100% free and 100% local. Now, to get a better sense and appreciation for the struggle that I'm going through, let me explain my setup. Max Tang sent me their mini PC to try out. This video is not sponsored by them. With that PC, I was able to actually get everything up and running really quick within less than 10 minutes. Previous to this, I was using the Raspberry Pi 5. I know, it's not really advised that you use like an LLM on a Raspberry Pi 5, but I was desperate, right? I didn't have anything else. It was pretty slow, as you can imagine. I would find that I'd have to constantly restart the device because it would just kind of fail or the service would just stop. So I was hoping that using this mini PC would give me a better, where at least it would be passable. I'd have to say that, yeah, my experience with it has actually been pretty decent. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. It's not like running this on like a massive like gaming computer, but this little machine held its own. So this specific model is the MTN FP750. It has a Ryzen 7 series AMD processor, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, and a terabyte of solid state memory. It also has two flavors of OS, Windows or Linux, I chose Linux because I know that has better support with Olama. Like I mentioned earlier, I was able to install Olama on this very quickly. And since this video isn't sponsored, there's something that you should know. One, this isn't a high-end gaming computer. You can run games on it, but uh, it doesn't have like a wickedly fast graphics card. So you're not gonna be able to run really large language models on this particular PC. Two, though my version was definitely faster and more stable than using a Raspberry Pi 5, I wouldn't use it for, let's say, everyday processes that requires quick, in-the-moment decisions. It's just not that type of machine. Uh, and last thing, my machine had a particular issue where if I had it in like performance mode, it was shut off within about maybe an hour or so. I don't know if it's because it's not cooling itself fast enough or if there was something wrong with it. When I reached out to Max Tang, um, they kind of recognized it as such. So I don't think this is something that is just wrong with all the machines in general. I think this just may be mined as it could have been damaged in transit. If you are looking to have a machine that you can run Home Assistant on and kind of play around with Olama and uh, and just work with LLMs a little bit, this is a fantastic machine. You can game on it if you so choose. Check the link in the description. You will find an affiliate link there. I do get a small kickback, but at no extra cost to you guys. This does help support the channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. So what does this mean for this project? I'm guessing here, but I suspect that I'm probably sending the LLM too much information. 
Now, some of you might be wondering, how am I using and getting data from AI in my automations? And I'm going to explain it in less than 30 seconds. In January 2024, I built AI Intent, a Node-RED plugin that lets me connect to GPT. And over the summer, I upgraded it to connect to Alama and Gemini. Now, what's great about this is that I fully control what data I send to these platforms. And based on the information that returns, I can trigger other automations. This ultimately lets me create a network of automations that can be controlled manually or purely with AI. You can try this plugin for yourself. And I'm going to be honest, I created the plugin in a rush, so there are bugs, but I do do my best to keep it as stable as possible. Since I don't have that much experience testing LLMs on Olama, I decided to benchmark my results with something I do know. So to find out what went wrong, I took the same automation and called GPT instead to see what I would get. Unsurprisingly, it was able to respond back with useful information. So I retried it again with Alama three times. The first time the call timed out, probably because the server was starting cold, so it needed a minute or two to boot up. The other two calls failed to even return data. This error means that there's a bug within AI intent. After running the automation again, I can see in the logs that Olama did respond, but I can also immediately see that there's a bigger problem. Dealing with the bug in AI intent will be easy, but this new problem will be much more trickier. If you haven't realized what it is, you're going to understand after this test. I reran the same automation with GPT, Olama, and Gemini. They all got the same data, the same instructions, and the results immediately confirmed my suspicions. The amount each LLM calculated was different, and not rounding error different, but using a different equation different. All right, so first I need to manually calculate all the transactions. In my instructions, I asked the LLMs to show their work and GPT gave me a clear playbook of how it calculated its total. At a quick glance, I was able to tell that it was pretty much on the money. I updated the code to follow what GPT did and only calculated the expenses while ignoring the refunds. Next, I need to see which LLM actually got the answer right. Now, I really shouldn't be surprised, but this felt like a soap opera twist. All of the LLMs got the calculations wrong, including GPT. I mean, I expected Olama to get it wrong. It's like the unwanted stepchild of the group, but GPT, uh, bro, I looked up to you, man. I looked up to you. Reviewing their answers, both Gemini and Olama were far off the mark, and it was easy to see in the work that they provided that they either omitted or added transactions to their calculations. The one that was baffling for me was GPT, as it had all the transactions, so I'm not sure if it hallucinated a different value for one of the transactions it returned. After manually verifying all the transactions and tallying up GPT's work, GPT did not hallucinate or change a single transaction. It even gave me the right logic and knew to add all the expenses while ignoring the refunds. It just simply returned the wrong number. Now, if GPT can't do it, I'm sorry. I don't think any of the other ones can do it any better. Now it just dawned on me, why would I make it in charge of a budgeting app when it just completely trash at math? So I'm gonna have to find a way around that one. <laughs> I do have an approach that I feel confident should work. I'll still let AI handle the insights, except I won't let it do any of the calculations. Instead, I'll tell it to call my local functions with the transactions to calculate, and I will calculate it locally myself. After creating a function and updating the instructions, I called all three LLMs with the same data again, and there was only one clear winner. Gemini refused to call the function I provided, and instead it wanted to calculate the total itself, incorrectly of course. Olama. Not only did Olama not return the relevant transactions, it also sent in letters when the schema said specifically that it needs to return numbers. GPT was the only one that called the function and generated the correct answer. I think the bigger question is right now, is it worth it? If I have to do like manual calculations, why bother send anything to the AI? It's just an extra step. It's just another point of failure. Why should I even include the AI at all? D did I fail? Like, does this, did, did I fail the project? Like I set out to show that LLMs can be used in meaningful ways, but right now it just seems to be getting in the way.